the way we think about this is really what changes as we go from kind of a static private cloud uh, centric infrastructure into either private plus public or multiple public cloud environments or even a single public cloud environment. And what it really comes down to is a change in the dynamicism of this infrastructure. In a private infrastructure, it tends to be much more static, right? We provision a VM, it lives for months to years, and we use an IP address as the unit of our security control. So an IP address is what we're using with our traditional privilege access management systems. It's what we're using with our firewalls. It's the unit that kind of identifies what workload is on that machine. Now, as we make this transition into kind of this more dynamic cloud environment, there's a few challenges to that, which is one, our infrastructure is much more ephemeral. So we don't have machines living for months to years. We might have things living for hours and days. And so one part of this challenge is how do we have a unit of, that we're managing uh, that is less subject to change, right? The other aspect of it is there's a lot more scale, right? So we have a you know, much larger infrastructure, so instead of having fewer machines with a lot of cores. We might have many, many more machines that are smaller in individual footprint. And then as we talk about multiple environments, IP is getting translated between them, right? So our IPs might be flowing through firewalls. They might be flowing for, through VPNs and NATs and other middleware that's translating the IP address. So where before we could use the IP as a unit of identity and manage around that, now our problem is IPs are coming and going all the time as we're scaling up, scaling down, and have this sort of ephemeral infrastructure. Plus, those IPs are flowing through systems that are translating it. So the IP is being rewritten. And so it becomes this really bad unit of management. right? We're sort of trying to hang our hat on a thing that's a moving target. And so instead, what is a static target? How do we think about identity? So instead of saying IP1 can talk to IP2, how do we instead express that as the web server can talk to the database, right? Where the web server is an identity and the database is an identity, and these things are static, right? It doesn't matter which IP address is associated with the web server as long as we know it's a web server. And it doesn't matter do we have 1, 10, or 50 web servers as long as all of them are identified as a web server. So what this lets us do is have this higher level rule that says web server is allowed to talk to the database, and now these things can come and go, and we're not rewriting firewall rules or trying to figure out how to constantly update a bunch of our infrastructure. Right? We have a relatively static set of rules assigned to a static set of identities, and then our infrastructure underneath that can still continue to be dynamic. So this simplifies a lot of it, and particularly has impact how we think about network topology. So oftentimes what we have to do is design our network topologies such that traffic is flowing through middleware in a very controlled way. And this lets us impose firewalls in different places and act as checkpoints where we're filtering IPs. Versus if we try and do that in this dynamic way, it becomes a very complicated topology. Instead, by focusing on service identity, we can have much simpler topologies and push that enforcement up to the service level where identity information is available to us.